Classify this one as a 650 to 700 level questions. Let's get started. The first one is a problem solving question. This deals with concepts about remainders. What is the least number that when divided by 44 leaves the remainder of 31, when divided by 56 leaves the remainder of 43 and when divided by 32 leaves the remainder of 19. Three different divisors, three different remainders. We need to find out the least number that would satisfy all of these conditions. Let's assign a variable. Let's say that number is n, the number that we are interested in finding out. Start with the first information that we have. This number, when divided by 44, leaves a remainder of 31. So let's do the division, right? This is how the division is going to be. The n divided by 44. Let's say the quotient of this division is an a. We get a remainder which is equal to 31. So by Euclid's division algorithm, or the way to write this is, n can be written as 44 times a, a is the quotient plus 31. This is what n is, right? Now look at it. If I add a 13 to both sides of this equation, the left hand side is going to become n plus 13. What do we have on the right hand side? We have a 44a plus this part, this is a 44. So 44a plus 44, this number is, will, is a number that will be divisible by 44. Because 44a is divisible by 44. This part is a 44, certainly divisible by 44, which means the net result is the sum of these two parts will be divisible by 44. What do we therefore have on the left hand side? The left hand side is an n plus 13. So when n divided by 44, if it leaves a remainder of 31, then n plus 13 is a number that is going to be divisible by 44. This is inference number 1. Let's quickly run through the remaining two divisions and check out whether we can draw a similar inference. The second one says, when n is divided by 56, let me say the quotient is a b, and we get a remainder which is equal to 43. So you can write n to be equal to a 56b plus a 43. Let's add the same 13 to both sides. 43 plus 13 is a 56. The left hand side is going to be an n plus 13. 56b is divisible by 56. This part is divisible by 56. So this net number n plus 13 is a number that is divisible by 56. So n plus 13 was divisible by 44. n plus 13 we have realized is now divisible by 56. So inference number 2. Check out whether we can draw the same inference for the third division. Certainly yes. Let's quickly run through it. n divided by 32. Let's say the quotient is a c. The remainder we get is a 19. So n is equal to 32c plus 19. Add 13 to both sides. We have n plus 13 on the left hand side. The right hand side, 32c is divisible by 32, no doubt at all. This part is 19 plus 13, which is a 32. That will also be divisible by 32, which means this entire sum is divisible by 32. So n plus 13 is divisible by 32. So the key inference that we can draw is that n plus 13 is divisible by 44, is divisible by 56, is divisible by 32. Which means obviously n plus 13 has to be a multiple of 44, multiple of 56 and a multiple of 32. So it's a common multiple of 44, 56 and 32. We need to find out the least value that n can take. Let's start with the least value for n plus 13. n plus 13 is a common multiple of these three numbers. The least such number is going to be the LCM of these three numbers. So smallest value possible for n plus 13 is LCM of 44, 56, 32. Let's quickly summarize till this point, consolidate it, before we go around to finding out the LCM. Right? The first inference is that n plus 13 will be divisible by 44. You realized it because n by 44 gives you a quotient a and a remainder of 31. So n is equal to 44a plus 31. We're adding 13 to both sides. So left hand side is n plus 13. Right hand side is a number that's divisible by 44. Quickly running through the remaining two, n plus 13 is divisible by 56, is also divisible by 32. So n plus 13 is divisible by 44, 56, 32, which means it's a multiple of 44, 56, 32. The smallest such number is the LCM of all these three numbers. So let's start by prime factorizing these three numbers. That's the first step towards finding out the LCM. Prime factorize 44. It's a 4 into 11. 4 is not prime. So 44 is a 2 square times 11. So move on to 56. 56 is a 7 into 8. 8 is a 2 cube. So this is 2 cube times 7. And lastly, 32. It's very easy to prime factorize. That's a 2 power 5. So step 1, we have prime factorized all of these three numbers. Finding out the LCM, the LCM we know once you have prime factorized these numbers is the product of the highest power of all of the primes. First step, I'm going to list down all the primes. 2 is a prime, 7 is a prime, 11 is a prime. So these three primes, I've listed it down, 2, 7, 11. The highest power of 2 among the three numbers is a 5. So let's go with 2 power 5. 
7 and 11, they appear only once with the power of 1. So 7 power 1, 11 power 1. So the LCM is 2 power 5 times 7 times 11. 2 power 5 is a 32. 7 times 11 is a 77. 32 times 77. 77 into 30 is a 2310. 2 times 77 is a 154. This will work out to 2464. So the LCM of these three numbers is 2464. What did we say the LCM was in this context? n plus 13 is the LCM of these three numbers. So n plus 13 equals 2464. n plus 13 smallest value is 2464. We need to find out the least value of n. So subtract 13 from this. So that's going to be equal to 2451. Quickly summarize it in a printed form before we move to the second question. Right. Computing the LCM. LCM is a product of the highest power of all primes. So you've taken 2 power 5, which is the highest power of 2, 7 and 11. That works out to 2464. 2464, the LCM is n plus 13. So n is equal to 13 less than 2464, which is 2451. Choice C is the answer to this question. Before you leave, two things. Sign up as a trial user at wzkwo.in slash core. It's one of the most comprehensive online GMAT course. Get started with a free topic, statistics and averages. Build momentum to your GMAT preparation. Subsequently, pay up and unlock the remaining topics. Lastly, subscribe to the channel youtube.com slash vizaco and spread the word among your friends who are preparing for GMAT. You may also choose to join this channel as a member for a small monthly fee and enjoy member-only perks that come with it and will help you boost your GMAT preparation.